Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Hogan. Welcome back to my Zero Carb Life. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Ken Berry, and he is going to talk to me today about how to help people get started for World Carnivore Month. Now, before before we get into this, Dr. Berry, uh, you and I sometimes message occasionally because hopefully, um, well, I consider you a friend now. You've been on the show a couple of times, as has your wife. I adore all of you. I feel like I know your kid now. You've got um, you've got a lot going on at your house. New dog, yep. yeah, um, new, new uh, herd dog. Yep, so cute. And you have a one year old. Yes, yes. So what I'm going to tell you is not going to phase you at all. But I have had, and there is a lingering smell down here, even as I speak. We came home from my son's birthday party tonight to find that my dog had had, and if anyone is eating, just maybe pause for a moment, explosive diarrhea all over. Uh, I mean, this was bad, Dr. Barry. This was bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm not entirely sure why I'm telling you this, except that I just feel like I need to put it up there right now. That's what hey. I've been doing for the past hour is I have been on my hands and knees yeah. scrubbing poop out of my floor. But I thought to myself, I bet you've had to deal with some poop at your house in the past little while. You know, a wise man once said, it happens. Actually, I stepped in it while wearing tights. Oh, no. <laughs> I did. All of that really happened. So um, it is still a little funky down here, but it's at least my foot is clean. <laughs> so, <laughs> now that we've gotten all of that out in the open, it just needed to be vented literally and yes. figuratively. Um, let's talk about World Carnivore Month. Yeah. I did not come up with World Carnival Month. I've seen people for the last couple of years holding up. There was a little meme of, was it Greta holding up yeah. the sun <clears throat> that said World Carnival Month? Where did it start? Do you know? Yeah, I'm sure Greta does not appreciate that. Oh, no, you know, no. The internet is what it is. I'm not exactly sure. I think Sean Baker may have started it two or three years okay. ago, but I'm not 100% for sure. But I, I, I'm certain it was started in answer to, you know, January being taken over by the vegans and called Veganary. I think it was an answer to that. Uh, the vegan diet is becoming more popular. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And as that happens, what we're going to see is more and more people becoming deficient in vitamins and minerals and omega-3 fatty acids if they don't take the list of supplements. And you know, there are people out there who firmly believe that a vegan diet, if you eat the rainbow and eat lots of berries from the hill, you know, the Himalayans and roots from Australia, that you can have a, a, a nutritionally complete vegan diet. And that is absolutely not true. Even Dr. Michael Greger, who's, you know, he's one of the top vegan gurus on his website. He has a list of, of vitamins and minerals and other supplements that vegan should take. He, he, he doesn't beat around the bush about it. If you're going to do a vegan diet, you have to take these supplements or you will develop vitamin, mineral, and omega-3 fatty acid deficiencies. Obviously, we know from eating this way, you've been carnivore now a little over a year and a half, correct? About, yeah, the about 19 months, mark. months now. Yeah. There you go. Um, we know how good we feel eating a nutrient-dense animal-based diet. And so it, it's maddening to us when we realize there's an entire movement that is trying to cut all of that out, right? Yeah. It's it's yeah. like saying everything that has changed your life to be so healthy, let's celebrate getting rid of it. Yeah, yeah. and, and you know, it, it's misleading to the general population because if you've been eating the standard American diet full of grains and sugar and vegetable oils and you convert from that to, to a vegan diet, you most likely will feel better yes. for a few weeks or a few months, no doubt about it. The problem comes after you've been on that vegan diet for, for many months or, or a few years and you start to develop the deficiencies because it is a nutrient depleted diet. There's, I mean, the, the science is what it is. All right. So if people want to start World Carnivore Month, I think that most people who decide I'm going to be a total carnivore, in my experience, those people are not usually eating a standard American diet or right. a vegan diet, they yeah. have mostly toyed around with low carb or yeah. keto, right? Like that's how it was for me. That's how it yeah. was for you. People who are thinking about trying carnivore, they were either paleo, low carb, ancestral, primal, 
they've already been thinking about their diet and its relation to their health. And so, yeah, I think you're right about that. I doubt many people who are just eating standard American crap have, have marked on their calendar World Carnivore Month. Right. And I've heard you say before that if someone is eating all of the things, I mean, standard American diet, that they should probably consider tapering down before just going full blown high fat carnivore. Not that it's necessarily going to kill you, but it's going to probably be tough on your gut. That's just a major change in a lot of ways. But we've seen people do it. I know you have. I have. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. totally possible. And I think yeah. it's totally healthy and yeah. safe to do that. But there's two big things you've got to contend with. One is the carbohydrate withdrawal that you're most yeah. likely going to have if you've been eating a high carb diet. And anybody who's withdrawn from alcohol or cigarettes or some illicit drug can tell you withdrawal sucks really bad. Uh -huh. The yeah. second thing you've got to contend with is that your, your gut, your large colon, is currently populated with sugar loving bacteria. Then they love that sugar and they're used to getting it. And there's this whole thing in uh, biology that doesn't get talked about enough. Those bacteria actually give you feedback to your brain through the vagus nerve. And they, they will let you know if you switch overnight from, from high carb to zero carb, they will rebel and they, it will be a mutiny and they will make you feel like you're going to die because they want wow. the nu nutrients they're used to. And it takes a few days to a couple of weeks to transition and upregulate the, the protein and the fat loving bacteria and downregulate the carb loving bacteria. You probably heard Joe Rogan's story uh, when he did uh, World Carnivore Month last month, yes. last year. For a, a few days or a week or two, he had explosive diarrhea, somewhat like your dog. And <laughs> that was because he, he was used to eating all the pasta and all the pizza. And when he stopped that, his bacteria had a conniption fit, as we say here in the South, and, yes. and just threw a fit, as we also say here in the South. Yes. So, all right. If somebody is wanting to go from eating all of the things to let's do this carnivore. Yeah. I think um, step one let's get all the garbage out of the house, right? Yep, yep, if yep. possible. Now, if you're living with a roommate or a husband like mine, you may not, they may not appreciate that, but as much as possible, you're going to get that out. Yep. I agree. Any lifestyle intervention is always easier if you've got a buddy, if you've got yeah. a partner. So if you can talk your roommate or your spouse or your mama, whoever you happen to live with, if you can talk them into doing a, a month of carnivore with you, that'll make it much easier. But I totally agree, especially if you're truly a sugar holic, you're addicted. Yeah. If that stuff's in the, in the pantry and in the fridge, after about two or three days when, when the withdrawal symptoms start, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to say no to that temptation. Yes. I mean, half the battle, I think, is just keeping it out of the house in the first place. Just yep. don't put it in the cart. Don't put it in your car. Don't bring it in your house. If it's not there, you're not going to eat it. That's right. Don't have it in your purse. Don't have no. it in your glove box. Don't have it at work. Don't have it hidden in the closet where your spouse mm -hmm. can't find it. None of that. It's got to it's gotta go. And if you thought of wasting food, then give it to a neighbor who would enjoy it. And I mean, actually, that's not being nice to your neighbor, giving them that crap. But I understand some people hate to waste food. Yeah, I know. I used to feel that way, too. I would definitely take it and give it to coworkers. But I've literally gotten to the point now where I feel guilty even giving it away. I, lit I really do. And yep. um, I have used dish soap many times through the years because <laughs> now having stuff in the house, it wouldn't bother me much. People give James treats all the time. It doesn't it doesn't faze me, but it yep. sure did at first. And if I had cookies or cake around me, I couldn't trust myself more than a few minutes. But if yep. I had one moment of willpower, that's all I had to do. I would take the dish soap and put it on there. And then it was gone. Like I couldn't trust myself with a trash can because I have gone into a trash can. But yeah. dish soap, it's dead. You can't fix that. Yeah, that's no. hard to wash off and it leaves no. a bad taste in your mouth. That's a great strategy, actually. And if you're living with a roommate or someone, you could just put the dish soap on their cookies as well as a favorite. Yeah. That's right? right. I was cleaning, I was cleaning your cookies, yo. <laughs> All right. So don't bring it in the house. If you do happen to be trapped, find a way to get rid of it, destroy it, whatever. Okay. But now you got to eat something. So what do they eat, Dr. Barry? 
So I love the the little mnemonic, uh, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, that because it's easy to remember, and it that that gives you some variety, and you can you can make hundreds of things with beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, and that's gonna be that's gonna be a high fat, excellent source of protein diet, uh, as you know, and most of your listeners probably know, there's no such thing as an essential sugar or an essential starch or an essential carbohydrate. You don't need any. And that's why uh, people do so great on a carnivore diet, because you're eating the two macronutrients your body actually needs, which are fats and proteins, which give you fatty acids, which are essential, and amino acids, which are essential. And so that beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, I think, is a great start. It's inexpensive. It's easy to remember. It's super easy to cook. You don't have to be a chef. And so, I mean, literally ground beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, that, that, that's in for for me, I'm kind of like you. I just eat the same thing every day. Uh, you know, every now and then, I think Nisha's cooking some lamb chops tonight. Yes. Nice. But usually it's minced beef and some and some bacon. Me and, me and Beckett, he's 14, almost 15 months old now, but we'll share some bacon and, and sausage. And uh, he, he was loving eggs for a minute. Now he doesn't really like them. So I have to cook runny eggs and I'll dip his little sausage bite into the yolk, right? Yes. That's um, ninja parenting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So he's getting all that nutrition, but he doesn't know he's eating an egg. But that keep it simple. You don't, it, it does not have to be anything special, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. So I feel like there are two different types of people that start carnivore. Some that are struggling to eat the animal foods because they don't tend to love beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And some people, their taste buds are so destroyed from eating pure garbage for so long that beef, butter, bacon, and eggs does not sound appealing, even though that's hard to believe. I, I meet those well, people. Right. Yeah, many people just have, they have to actually have a mature palate to enjoy a carnivore diet. And so for the, you know, uh, I think it's fine to add some zero carb condiments all the yes. Redmond's real salt, they've got like 20 different kinds of lemon pepper, yes. garlic, onion. I think those are all fine to use. I, I'm a big fan of, of zero carb, cheap mustard. I can put yep. mustard. I think I could put mustard on a dog turd and be like, yeah, it's yeah. not the worst dog turd I've ever eaten, right? So, right. but I think you use condiments like that, always watching the ingredients and always yeah. watching the, the total carbohydrate count. And I think I, I don't have a problem with people using those kind of condiments to add a little flavor as their palate matures. Yes. So I think for those people, variety, find some uh, carnivore recipes. And there are some great sites. My friend Dana does a great site. My friend, Lisa, Dr. Lisa Wiedemann, she's yep. like a 12-year carnivore. She's got a whole YouTube channel of recipes. Nisha does keto and carnivore recipes, there are some great sites to help people get in their animal foods. Absolutely. But then you have people who are more like myself. My problem was never making myself eat animal foods. It was not knowing when I was full, not knowing when to stop, having no hunger cues whatsoever. Right. So I think, you know, when we describe how to start carnivore for these two different groups of people, it might look really differently. For the first group, all the mustard, all the seasonings and salt make it palatable. And for someone like me, it's like, I kind of want it to be a little more mundane, repetitive, yeah. yep. right? Yeah, simple. And yeah. I, I think that's the, the, everybody needs to understand this is not complicated. This is not hard. It's easy. And you can make it as complicated and as frou-frou as you want, but it does not have to be that way uh, at all. Yeah. So no, I think people just need to sort of know themselves. Are you struggling to get in enough food or are you struggling to ever stop getting food? Yeah. yeah. And I think you what? hit on an important uh -huh. point. I think a lot of people have no idea of what true hunger feels like. No. And they also have no idea of what true satiety or fullness because they've never experienced either during their life. Because when you're eating high carb addictive foods, you can eat them all day long, every day. And people do, Right. And right. then also people are eating every two or three hours. So they're never truly hungry. It's important to understand that it's going to take you a minute. If you've been eating a high carb diet and eating three meals or snacks in between, it's going to take you a minute to, to kind of become friends with what real yeah. hunger feels like. It's not boredom. It's not that, that, that you're carb craving. It's not the withdrawals. It's not depression. It's not anxiety. The, those are not hunger. No. 
hunger is a specific physiological feeling, but it takes a minute to even kind of get acquainted with it for some people. Yes. So for me, having just plain burger patties in my fridge at all times, I keep, I mean, hardly ever do I run out of burger patties. And when I do, I restock. We need some more. So people who are getting started, you could either do some burger patties in a skillet, throw them on a grill, go yep. pick them up at Wendy's or McDonald's. They're just beef. Make yep. it however you want to do it. They could be grass fed, grain fed, frozen, thawed beef patties. Yep. And it, when you think you're hungry, I'll tell you, for me, the ultimate way to find out is I look in that fridge and I see a pile of burger patties and you either know if you're, you know, if you're hungry right yep. away, yep. because if you are not really hungry, good luck trying to choke down a plate of burger patties. Uh, exactly. And that, that's one of the beautiful things about the carnivore way of eating is that it teaches you, are you really hungry? And I've actually talked about the, the beef, bacon and egg test to see if you're truly hungry. So if you're like, oh, I think I'm hungry, go to the, have some boiled eggs in the fridge at all times, have some bacon cooked up in a Ziploc bag, and then have your beef patties right there. Yeah. If you don't want any of those three things, then you, my friend, are not truly hungry. You're either bored or you're depressed or you're anxious or the carbs are calling you. That's how you know, because if just imagine a, a human being from 100,000 years ago, if they hadn't eaten in three days, and you opened your fridge and they saw the bacon, eggs, and, and beef patties, yeah. what, what would they do? Right. They'd exactly. slap you for not eating that, it. <laughs> that's right. You'd get an elbow in the face and they'd eat all your, your beef, bacon, and eggs. That's yeah. what true hunger is. That's how you know. And if you're not hung, if you're not hungry for a beef patty, then you're not really physiologically hungry. And I have to say hungry in air quotes because people are like, no, I'm not hungry for that. Have you heard people say that? Yep. It's like, I'm hungry for some of this over here. That's never real hunger. If you, if you say, no, I'm not hungry for that. I'm hungry for this. That's either a craving or you just, you just want some of that. That's, and which yeah. is fine. But if you're hungry, you're going to grab a boiled egg or a piece of beef. Yes. And I honestly could eat bacon hungry or not. Bacon is one of those foods where if I kept a pile of it in my fridge, well, I, I wouldn't. I could just eat it all the time. So, but that's me. I, I'm still not great with hunger cues. Yep. So you and I both totally agree on the fact that, especially women who have been used to dieting and eating um, little grilled chicken, some salad, we don't even know what it's like to really get full. Right. And so when we tell people eat till you are like comfortably, but totally satisfied, comfortably yep. full. People don't really know what that feels like. No, I agree. And I think that's great advice. And I've actually had a lot of people reach out to me on social media and say, look, every time I eat, like you say, I eat, you know, like six eggs and three pieces yeah. of bacon and whatever, I, I have nausea for 30 minutes or something. And I don't, I don't think any of us know for sure why that is. But what I, my theory is, is that that is their satiety signal but they're yeah. misinterpreting it because of just what you just said. They're used to eating these little bird portions all their life, which is not ancestrally appropriate. Our ancestors never just had a little snack. We either ate like we meant it or we were busy doing something else. And so I think for, uh, just for everybody to keep that in mind for the first week or two, when you're, when you eat like uh, Kelly and I tell you to, till you're comfortably stuffed or until you're completely satisfied that may come at you, the, the feedback you get may be mild nausea, like, ooh, I, I feel kind of yucky. That, that is the true satiety signal because it means you're done eating. There's no room for dessert. There's no room for another this. You're done. When you get that signal, that's your hormones telling you, Bubba, push away <laughs> from the table, you're done. So I typically do that for lunch. I eat about a pound of meat. And then for dinner, I do about the same, sometimes more like a half pound to a pound for dinner. Because for me, I could combine all of that into one big meal, but I just don't love that feeling of being super full. Some people yeah. love it. So yeah. I tell folks, eat a, as big of a meal as you want of meat and then do that again when you're ready to do that again, but don't yeah. snack your way through the next 24 hours. Like Absolutely. just yeah. fill up. Yeah. Yep. Try to keep your meals discreetly separated. And so uh, I did one meal a day for months and I did okay with that. But just with our, fa our family set up with Beckett and everything, 
uh, I like to eat uh, with them. And so usually I'll, I'll, I'll start about 12 or 1 p.m. And that's when I'll break my fast. And then I'll have a second meal about 5 p.m. And so I've got about a five hour uh, feasting window and that gives me a 19 hour fast every day. I think that's a great strategy. I think almost everyone can do that if they eat until they're comfortably stuffed or completely satisfied. Uh, if you're, if you're portion controlling or you know, like, Oh, that's too big of a piece for me, then you're going to get hungry again because you didn't eat enough food for you. You let your hunger tell you when you're done. Love it. All right. So if people are, I'm, I'm trying to keep in mind brand new baby carnivores. They're going to go to the grocery store, buy lots of packs of ground beef if they want to make their own frozen yep. patties. If they don't yep. feel like patting it, McDonald's, if they don't even feel like cooking it, Absolutely. stock that fridge, yep. lots of cartons of eggs, lots of butter, my yep. favorite butter. Um, I, Kerry gold is like the carnivore gold standard. We almost all are like, that's a pretty great grass fed butter. Yep. Um, I'm pretty into goat butter right now too, but, Go get man, you some Kerrygold. I love, I love, love goat, goat butter and sheep's yeah. butter. It's hard to find, but man, yeah, that's yeah. divine. I love it that stuff. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of flavor. Some A new carnivore, it might be a little strong, but they could work up to it. It's they so could. good. Yeah. All right. Yep. Eggs, butter, get you some bacon, unless you're a super overeater like me and you don't really need that. It's a little bit like meat candy for me. Yeah. Okay. So you're stocked up. You're going to eat one big meal of meat. And then if you want a second one that day, you're going to eat another big meal, either scramble loose ground beef in a skillet. Also delicious, easy. Yep. Yep. Um, eat people say, do I have to eat all the fat? So fat versus protein. What's your advice on that? It's up to you. I would, I would eat as yep. much fat as you enjoy. Let your body tell you. And that's, that's one key concept that for, for keto and for carnivore is your if you listen to your body once once you've healed to a certain degree from your previous transgressions against your digestive system, your body will let you know. And so there are days when I literally cook two pounds of ground beef, and I, I tell you a great quick and easy thing that's super tasty is to crack some eggs and, and scramble them up and pour them on the beef when it's almost done, the crumbled beef, and then yeah. just stir that up, and it's like we call it load, loaded scrambled eggs. And it's freaking delicious, right? Yes. But sometimes I will, I will dr almost drink the the beef tallow, or I'll just pour it over on top of the meat. Other days I don't want it, and right. so I think after a while your body will you'll know. Do I need more fatty acids or not? And you don't know it intellectually. That's what no. people have to understand. You've got brain processes and and digestive system processes running at a subconscious, unconscious level. You're not, you're not aware of them, but they will give you information by adjusting your hormones. And uh, we were doing a video on the house earlier, and we've got some Redmond Real, Real Salt uh, rocks, right, that they sent us from okay. the mine. And I gave Beckett his salt rock, and some days I give him that salt rock, and he'll lick it one time and hand it back to me. He didn't want it. Other days, he'll lick that rock for three or four minutes. Yeah. And, because and see he he's not thinking well have I had enough milligrams of sodium today <laughs> he's not doing that he's listening right. to his body and as soon as his taste buds say well that's enough he he hands it back and so he just he can feel his body's feedback and all of us can feel that once we've gotten rid of all the inflammation and all of the crap that we've accumulated both in our bodies and in our mind for the last few decades, you can actually listen. And so some days I, I scarf up the fat. Some days I, I drain the beef and I just don't want yes. the fat. Yeah. Oh man. If your body is not needing fat, <laughs> go ahead and try to eat a stick of butter or drink the tallow out of your ground beef. Oh, it's awful. But yeah, well, I'll tell you a funny it. story. Yeah. We were we were at Nisha's parents' house this weekend, and Nisha had made this soup, which was like a bone broth, super thick with cream and butter. God, it was good. 99% uh, carnivore. There was almost nothing in it. She, I think she maybe put some garlic or onion or something in there. Okay. And so there was some left over, and I was and I saw a bowl sitting on the counter. And we're we we you're probably the same way. You've got grease, like you've got bacon grease and beef tallow all over the place that you're saving. Yep. Well, somebody had poured the bacon grease into the bowl, and but I thought it was the soup, and I took a big gulp of that because I thought it was that soup, and yeah, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it's not something I'd want to do every day. Just yeah. a big gulp of bacon grease. 
<laughs> there are days when I'm sure I have had days where I literally crave fat and will just sit and take hunks of butter. Yep. But today is not one of those days for me. So that sounds kind of horrible, man. It's too bad. <laughs> yeah. And I'm the same way with salt that I go through weeks when I want all of the salt or days when I suddenly don't can't stand it. Yeah, I I think your advice is spot yeah. on. OK, when someone is starting and they've got these withdrawals and they're trying to deal with physical cravings and mental cravings and taste buds that aren't wanting what's in front of them. Do you have any advice for what they can do during that tough time? Yeah, sometimes uh, the salt. Uh, a salt rock or just some salt, a pinch of salt on the tongue will turn off hunger. Okay. Especially if you're craving something stupid that, you know, even if yeah. you weren't carnivore, that's dumb. I shouldn't eat that. A lot of times a pinch of salt on your tongue will just make that craving go away. Sometimes you need to go for a five minute walk sometime and because a lot of times cravings are very temporal, like they're very severe. Oh my God, I'm going to die if I don't have some fill in the blank. But five minutes later, you're distracted and you've totally forgot about it unless you gave into it. And so I think those two that are and then uh, sometimes for me, carbonated water like San Pellegrino, uh, sipping on something bubbly will just make the craving go completely away. So that's three good strategies uh, that that work really well, making sure that you're getting plenty of uh, of minerals, plenty of electrolytes. How do you do you worry about electrolytes at all or do you just eat your beef patties? I've. I've only tried two packets of electrolytes and it was only about, and that's in 11 years of carnivore. I never did it transitioning until about six weeks ago. A good friend of mine said, look, I know you feel good, but seriously, just try these. You might feel awesome. I can't, I love them so much. And I looked at the ingredients. It was just the unflavored, not sweetened electrolytes. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, girl, I will try these because I love this chick. Yeah. And I actually had leg cramps that night and I do not normally. <laughs> and I said, Amanda, it's my friend, Amanda. I had leg cramps. She said, they cannot be at trial again. So I used the second pack and I did again because, and I know I'm not saying that electrolytes give people leg cramps. What I'm saying is if your body is totally in balance, changing something one way or the other, when all is well is probably stupid. I think that, yeah, that probably goes against one of the laws of common sense. If, if it ain't yeah. broke, right? Yeah. Right. So I have to say that is not a totally fair trial. It was literally two days of my life, but I don't think I'm going to be signing up for a third. But I have heard of some people that, especially in the beginning of carnivore, while things are balancing out, you've seen people have good results from electrolytes, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for especially people on keto, that seems like the electrolytes really help with the carbohydrate withdrawal. And I okay. would expect that they it would help for, uh, for carnivore as well. I've heard people say that um, some slivered butter, just to melt butter on their tongue, especially yep. Yep. if you're craving ice cream, frozen butter. I'll sometimes yep. treat myself to that. It, I've it, done that it before. Will, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And a lot of times if I'm in the in the morning and I'm not ready to break my fast, but I'm like, ooh, I'm hungry, I'll put a little teaspoon of butter in my coffee. And okay. just that little amount of fat turns my hunger completely off. And then I don't think about food again until it's time to eat. Yeah. So that's a way, ways to deal with the physical cravings with mental. So we're doing no cheese January right now. Mm -hmm. So I myself am having to deal with an actual carnivore challenge for the first time in a very long time. I don't even eat that much cheese, but I am one of those people where as soon as you say you can't have something, I'm like, oh, but why can't I have cheese? So here we are all of January 2nd. And yeah. the, the challenge for me yesterday and today was it was my son's birthday party today. And I make this cake called Oopsie cake. It's just my version of Oopsie bread. And it involves a lot of cream cheese, eggs, and heavy cream. Mm -hmm. Well, I Googled, and it turns out that cream cheese is cheese. <laughs> I was like, no, man. So here's this huge, beautiful cake that I made. And, you know, you're in the kitchen for hours. We made four sheet cakes of this stuff. It's not sweetened at all. Normally, every January, we celebrate my my son's birthday, my birthday, my brother's birthday, my mom's birthday. It's a lot of cake. So I'm in there, you know, and I just expect that eating all of that cheese, my skin will get a little broken out. That's a thing. 
Yep. It's fine. But this January, I've signed up for this challenge. Okay. Yep. So I've been it. in the ki- I'm sticking to it. So I was over at my parents' house tonight. Everybody with these huge pieces of carnivore cake. So there is the mental struggle as well. And this is um, my new paint by number tiger. And <laughs> it turns out that having a little hobby can be really useful when you're struggling with something. So instead of spending all of my time up in the kitchen, kind of being angry about this cheese, I just finished this tiger. Um, I had more time on my hands to do something interesting. Like you said, take a walk, paint, whatever. Basically the withdrawal symptoms from sugar or carbohydrates are exactly the same symptoms of alcohol withdrawal or or nicotine withdrawal, or even some illicit drug withdrawals. And so uh, just Google withdrawal strategies, right? And the, the strategies that will help with alcohol withdrawal will also help with, with sugar withdrawal as well. And so whichever ones of those sound, because some of them you can be like, that's dumb. How would that help? I ain't doing that. Yeah. Others of them, you're like, ooh, that might help a little bit. Implement those into your routine to help you because for three to seven days, three to 10 days, for some people, the carbohydrate withdrawals are going to be a nasty work. Yeah. Yes. I did a lot of crocheting when I first started carnivore. (laughs) So much crocheting. I could watch TV with James, but my hands were still busy. My mind was more occupied and it just kept me from doing mindless eating the whole time. Now, if somebody is needing some, they're dying to do some mindless eating for heaven's sakes, make it pork rinds or something. Right. Yeah. If you're going to snack, try not to snack in between meals at all. Uh, But if you are, pork rinds are an excellent choice. Uh, That little pat of butter we talked about is an excellent choice. If you've got, and so when you do, when you start your carnivore month, I would have boiled eggs and bacon in the fridge at all times. And if you get super snacky, then you didn't just screw the pooch if you eat some bacon in a boiled egg. That's not, you didn't just destroy your diet, right? You you had a snack, which is not the end of the world if, if it's rare, but you did not eat any stupid carbs. And so I think yeah. that's a good strategy is to have it. If you, if you need a Ziploc of, of boiled eggs and bacon in your purse, in the glove box at work, uh, at your, your boyfriend's house, wherever you need your bacon and eggs, you need to have them there. So when that moment of weakness strikes, you got what you got, what you need. And if you don't want that, then you're not truly hungry and you don't need a snack. No, that's right. And if the worst you eat, well, first of all, if you're not hungry, This is sort of like the burger patties. There is no way you're going to eat a bowl of hard boiled eggs. You're just not. But if you do and you say, I wasn't really hungry, but I ate 12 hard boiled eggs. Great. Good for you. Yeah. Full of nutrition. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's just going to be a while till you want another meal, I assume. That's it. That's the only downside. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk exercise. When people start out, they ask me all the time, should I exercise? What are your thoughts on that? So there's no doubt about this. Exercise is great for your body and mind in thousands of ways. I mean, there's just unlimited number of ways that it benefits your body and your mind to exercise. Now, I don't mean go join the gym and pay a monthly fee. I don't mean buy $10,000 worth of workout. You don't need any of that. Literally, you can go for a walk, go for a jog, go for a run, drop off the couch and do some push-ups, some sit-ups. Literally, that's all it has to be. But I want people to understand very clearly that that's not going to help you lose more weight if that's your goal. That's that's 95, 97% what you put in your mouth and what you don't. That's what's going to help you with the burning the fat off and getting rid of it. But there's tons of studies showing that exercise uh, prevents dementia, that it keeps your muscles and joints strong. As we get older, we tend to lose muscle if we don't continue to do strenuous things. And you don't want that at all. You don't want your bone density getting thin. thin. You want to have strong bones, strong muscles, and a strong mind. Exercise helps with all those. And, you know, we were talking earlier about looking for something to do to keep from giving into that craving. Exercise is a great way to do that because, I mean, if you just go out in the yard and jog in place as fast as you can for 30 seconds, you're going to release some endorphins and you're going to, you're going to bump up your heart rate. You're going to get out of breath. That's going to distract you from the craving. And I guarantee you, by the time you get back in the house from doing that, you, you, you will have forgotten the craving. I oftentimes I'll do a 30 second sprint almost every single night. I sprint 15 seconds out and 15 seconds back and I can be kind of in a mood, 
But that 30 seconds will sort of fix that. Yep. And then I'm happy to sit in my chair at that point. It, yep. it is a little bit of a release. I actually hate running, but I can deal with 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, 30 seconds of sprinting I can deal with too. But if you want, if you said, hey, let's go, let's go jog a half marathon, we're not friends. No. So I can't do it. No, I did it one time and I for real thought I had done permanent damage. <laughs> I really do not enjoy it. I know some people love running, but I agree with you. And especially in the beginning of carnivore, you are going through enough without needing to feel like you need to go on an hour run every day. Yep. Sit your tail down and relax. Sleep it off if you need to. You know, at least if you're asleep, you're not craving anything. And we're just right. talking the first few days, but this is not lifelong advice. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally agree. Whatever you need to get through those first few days of withdrawal and uh -huh. perhaps the, first, the few days of uh, uh, colon problems, which some people yeah. have, some people don't really have at all. Uh, I, I went from, from low carb to keto to carnivore. So I really didn't have any gastrointestinal issues. I was already really low carb and ate a ton of meat, but, but some people, if they go from high carb to carnivore, you might have some diarrhea or constipation for a few days. It's okay. It's not dangerous. It'll sort itself out when the bacteria rebalance, but it might not be fun for a few days. Yeah. You don't want to go on a long run like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to get too far from the toilet paper. <laughs> and if you are having loose bowels, you also do not want to eat half a stick of butter. That's right. total disclaimer. <laughs> you know what we should start saying? We should start saying that when you go carnivore and get diarrhea, that's just your body cleansing itself. It's getting the rid of all the toxins because people would believe that. That's the carnivore like, cleanse. No, it is fine. I'm clearing my toxins. I just had a carnivore cleanse, Dr. Barry. I feel amazing. That's it. Yes. <laughs> I had to sprint to get there, but man, good stuff. You're healthier already, everybody. <laughs> Got rid of the poison. Yes. And if someone is, I, I don't usually hear of a new carnivore dealing with constipation, but every once in a while I do. But butter would take care of that. Yes, 100%. Beef tallow, butter, bacon grease. Yep. It'll take care of it. Yep. Usually it is the other way, though. Yeah, okay. Almost always, yeah. So uh, most people who are doing World Carnivore Month, they're all in for that 31 days. But then at some point, I'll get people who ask me, what if I only want to do carnivore now part of the time? Like, can I do it five days a week and then on the weekends just eat my normal diet? Thoughts? I, I, think, I think that's less good than staying carnivore all the time. Yeah. But it's also less bad than eating the junk diet that you used to, used to eat, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I, I, I hear this sometimes out there in the, in the nutrition on Twitter and other places that the worst possible thing you can do is combine high fat with carbs, right? Yeah. Like if, you have, if, you, if you eat a, a ribeye and then you, you know, have some carbs with that, that somehow they combine together to produce this lethal toxin. And that's just not, that doesn't make any physiological sense. Fatty meat is an ancestral food of humans that we, we literally cut our teeth on as a species. And in my opinion, every baby ought to cut their teeth on meat too. But yeah. that, that, is a, that is a perfect food for a human being is, is fatty meat, right? And so to say, oh, if you combine that with carbs, then that's somehow the fat and carbs that makes a really toxic mixture. That's like saying if you, you know, if you uh, drinking water is OK, but if you mix uh, water with strychnine, it makes a lethal combination. Well, yeah, okay. but it, it's not the water. OK, it. it's the poison. It's a strychnine. Doing yeah. It. And so combining carbs with with fatty meat or with fat in general, that's not that there's no magic there. You just ate too many carbs. Okay. I've always heard that. I've even said that because I've heard it so much. Yep. Um, yep. I really thought that must be a thing. Well, this is very good news. So because I have so many fatty steaks at the house all the time for me and the kids, James eats them too. And my husband, as most everyone knows, he will still have a sweet potato on the side. He'll have, <laughs> 
they'll have macaroni and cheese on the side. Yep. And I, in my mind, kept thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to kill him quicker because, <laughs> because he's eating this stuff. But what you're saying is any amount of that plate that is taken up by the steak, that's a good thing. That's exactly right. The more of your plate that's taken up by nutrient dense, real human food, the better. Yeah. And okay. so if he wants to have a half of a sweet potato or a single elbow of macaroni and cheese, I know he's having more than that, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if, yeah, if he wants to have a yeah. tiny little portion, I don't think that, that, that doesn't magically become something bad. That means that that meal for him was just a little less good than it could have been. For myself, I am insanely strict because one elbow of macaroni and cheese would never be where it stopped. It would be a plateful. So I do think new carnivores need to know, yep, we're not the carnivore, the carb police. You can no. eat whatever you want to. We will never know, but your body will know. And it's like giving into a toddler that is temper tantruming. You will only have an out of control, constant, angry toddler in your head know. and in your body. That's right. You will pay if you if you give into that. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, I think that it's fine if, if somebody wants to have a cheat meal or they want to have a cheat weekend. There's okay. nothing magically bad that's going to happen. That it just means that their overall diet is less good than it was and less nutrient okay. nutritionally complete than it was. And they may wake up the old carbohydrate addiction and then have to go through the the few days of withdrawal again. And yes. I'm, I'm with you. I, I can't touch it. Over the holidays, no. uh, we had some, some keto-friendly uh, Christmas snacks and stuff, and they were freaking delicious. But uh, today, me and Nisha went through the, and we threw probably 15 pounds of junk in nice. the garbage because I, I can feel it. I, if it was there tonight when I got off this, I would go eat some of that. And then tomorrow night, then the next night, and then I would be – and then it would be on like Donkey Kong, right? Yep. And so I, I just know it needs to be out of the house. And that way, I don't even think about it. Yeah, I have to be that way. And I, it comes across, I think, as dogmatic, but it's not. It's just me knowing my own body and my own self. I have to yep. be really strict. And plus, the withdrawals were so bad for me. I'm never doing, I'm not going through it again. No, mm -mm. Uh, same for me. And now Nisha, every now and then, she can have a, a serving of some kind of keto friendly carb. She, she admitted it and call to her, but me, yeah. mm -mm, I'd be making plans for the next day. Yep. For people to know what they can eat, any meat that is not covered in a sugary something, a sauce, like we said, mustard is fine. Usually a cream sauce is fine, yep. but yep. if it's covered in a sweet, like ketchup -y kind of sauce, avoid that. If it's breaded, don't eat the breaded. Right. Other than that, Fish, beef, chicken, lamb, as long as your body tolerates it. Now, I did just chat with Michaela Peterson. There are some people with autoimmune issues that have to do just ruminant animals. Yeah. And exactly. I'll list all of those here. But yeah. for and the I'll most you, part, Kelly, yeah. I think, I think ruminant animals are the best choice every time. Yeah. But I love I love seafood. Uh, we right. Nisha and I love sashimi. We love, uh, you know, all kinds of crustaceans. Uh, I think that chicken is fine. I think pork is fine. Yeah. I think uh, sheep, goat, venison, any wild game is fine. I think uh, if you want to eat a rattlesnake, that's fine. Uh, if you want to eat a possum, that's fine. But don't tell anybody because that, that's frowned upon. <laughs> yeah. I, but now some people, if they branch too far away from the ruminant animals, which would be a cow, sheep, goat, venison, they will start to have autoimmune symptoms. And so yeah. in that respect, like you said earlier, you need to know yourself and know, mm -hmm. yeah, I could enjoy that. And it's keto. I mean, it's carnivore, but I would pay for that because my joints, my skin, my, you know, my vision, whatever would flare yeah. up if I ate that. And she says the same thing is true for her with any spice at all, even yeah. black pepper. She's just now working the black pepper. So as far as the rules of carnivore, we allow for all animals and seasonings and dairy, but we always have to throw out the disclaimer. If carnivore isn't working for you, narrow it down, narrow it down to ruminants, narrow, cut out the dairy, cut out the seasonings. <clears throat> and just for her, it had to be beef, salt, water. Yep. And the salt is optional depending on what works best for your body. But for her, that's what she said that she preferred is beef, salt, water. So there is the very narrow option. But even Michaela said, man, if you can handle spices and dairy, please enjoy it for me. Right. Yep. 
And the the jury's still out on whether, you know, because I'm sure people are listening and going, beef, salt, and water? Uh, that sounds like torture. I don't think I could do uh -huh. that forever. Well, nobody's saying you have to do that forever. No. If currently, if that's the carnivore diet that you have to do right now to heal and to get back to good health, then do that diet for a month, three months, a, a year. Yeah. But at some point, no one in the carnivore community has said you can't probably branch out and have other animals, maybe even have some, some keto friendly veg every now and then, or some berries every, or God forbid a tablespoon of honey twice a year. The, that's probably doable once you've healed your metabolism. And once you have regained the health that you've been basically uh, hiding in the closet all your life, you may be able to branch out and do other things. But right now for this month, let's focus on healing. Let's focus yeah. on getting your, your blood sugar and your insulin levels and your levels of inflammation all back down to normal. Then in three months, six months, a year, you can say, hey, I want, I'm, I'm going to play around a little bit. I'm going to experiment. And that doesn't mean giving in to your carb addiction, right? That just means right. I wonder if I can add back some sensible foods that are, in fact, real food, one ingredient. Maybe, maybe nothing bad will happen now, and maybe you're right. Maybe you're not. And that's why all the, everybody in the carnivore community, we get to experiment, and we get to try all these things, right? I'm going to yeah. do a, a dairy-free month. Okay, now I felt great. Let me eat a month with lots of dairy. I didn't feel as great. Then you get to decide, is it worth it to eat the cheese or not, and to use yeah. the heavy cream or not? Same goes for, for just any number of things. You get to experiment with that. And once you've gotten your body back to good health and you've gotten your levels of inflammation down, your body will give you feedback immediately. If you ate something that you shouldn't have ate, it, your body will let you know, trust me. And then you'll know, okay, that's just off the menu. At least for, I'll try it again next year. I'll try it once a year and because I love it. I wish I could eat it again, but it's not worth having joint pain or gut pain or my skin flaring up. It's just not worth that. Yeah. Even Michaela just recently discovered she can have chicken now. Yeah. absolutely could not have it at first and now <coughs> her gut has healed she can have chicken have a little bit of seasonings and she feels good so i think you're right there is a possibility for expansion and yes. then for those that are perfectly happy eating i am so happy eating the way i eat now i don't yeah. miss the veg stuff you don't have to try to add it back but no you're you don't. right it may right. Be, yeah you may be physically able to at some point if you wanted to Right. But I don't think it's ever necessary. I don't, no. if you eat a meat only diet, I mean, you, you want to make sure that you're getting all your, your vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids. You yeah. can get all those from an animal based diet. You're not missing anything, any, there's not a single nutrient yeah. you're missing by never eating broccoli again. Sorry. I know I just made some keto people mad. There's no nutrient you're missing. If you never eat an avocado again, Never. You're not missing anything. No. But if you love avocado, it's not such a terrible food to cheat on carnivore with. Same goes for broccoli. If you can eat it and it doesn't cause inflammation, then you can eat that. But but eat, call it what it is. I want that because I like it. Not because yeah. well, I'm afraid I'm missing out on magical phytochemicals. I need to eat some some plants or I'll, I'll be, have a deficiency. No, no, you won't. Oh, I love it. Anytime somebody that's an MD says that, it just good stuff <laughs> and it's so true i know it's true for me but it's always yeah, good to hear you say kelly. i mean look at kelly uh I, I would love to get your husband and, and ask him one question is he around is he's upstairs with my children <laughs> no bothering i would just love to know but you know everybody says oh if you just eat meat only you'll develop all these vitamin and mineral deficiencies i would love to ask your husband Versus 15 years ago, how's Kelly's hair now? How's Kelly's skin now? How's Kelly's oh. food now? How's Kelly's just energy level now? Yeah. And I would love to hear, hear his response because if you have a vitamin or a mineral deficiency, all those areas suffer. Yes. Suffer. You have terrible skin, terrible hair, you you're, have no energy, your mood's terrible. All that yeah. stuff suffers if you're deficient in a vitamin or a mineral but you ain't deficient in none of that. Mm -hmm. I can tell by looking at you and talking to you that you're, you're getting all the nutrition you need from your little hamburger patties. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Now he has come on the channel to talk before. And even though he thought this was the most insane thing ever, because he is a total moderator and you know, you should 
everything in balance. That's just who he is. So it seemed completely nuts. He would be mortified if I suddenly announced that I wasn't doing this anymore because like, he remembers. Let's talk about this. Yeah. He knows that my mood now, I'm just really even keel and happy. I don't ever take a nap. I used to have to come home from school. I was just exhausted. This was before I even had one kid, let alone three. Yep. So to have more energy now with children and just a lot more activities going on in life. And I used to be on um, Accutane, which anybody who knows anything about um, acne meds, that is a nasty, bad drug. It is. Yeah. Boils. I would have to go get those cut. My hair was falling out. Yeah. Everything was worse. So yeah, you're right. Just eating only animal foods, even if you're not touching a liver, even if you're not taking an electrolyte or anything, animal foods are going to improve your health over eating what I was eating before, which was cereal, pasta, salads. I did eat a lot of salads because I wanted to be skinny. <laughs> I did. It didn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work for millions of people. You're not alone. No. And my blood sugar went up with every single year. It, everything was getting worse every yep. year. And I was 25 when I cut back on carbs. But if you had seen me at age 25, I put a pic here. I know it's the same pic I show all the time because I don't have many pictures from back then. I hated them and I trashed them as soon as I saw them. I looked old at age 25. Yeah. And I bet you felt old compared to Oh, age I did. Oh, I did. Yeah. All right. This is amazing information to help people get started. Um, I will link to your Instagram, to how to purchase your book. Lies, my doctor told me, has changed a lot of lives. And if you are looking for, if any of you are looking for a great book to help you get started on how to totally change your health, this would be a great one. Dr. Barry, thank you for coming on to the show again. Uh, thank you so much, Kelly. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. All right. I'll see you on Instagram. Bye. Okay, see you there. <laughs>